Peace, love, and transcendence, and thank you once again for tuning into my channel. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about ancestral altars, um, how to set them up, who are the ancestors, why it's important to set up an ancestral altar, and why you should set up your ancestral altar according to your specific needs, wants, and so on and so forth. Because remember, everyone ances everyone's ancestral altar is going to vary and it's going to be different. And so um, this is just to give you an overview and just to give you an example of what an ancestral altar is um, and how to set it up. Um, and also, I always, always, always encourage you to do further reading, further research, uh, further, um, to further your knowledge on certain subjects, topics that may interest you. So first off, uh, what is an ancestor or who are ancestors? So an ancestor or what is an ancestor? So ancestors are those individuals in your family that you are related to genetically, DNA, blood wise, that have preceded in death before you or that have transcended or died um, before you were born or either after you were born. So that is what an ancestor is. An example of ancestors could be mother, father, sister, brother, aunts, uncles, cousins, um, just your blood relatives. And also, in some instances, in some cases, you could also consider those who raised you or those who helped raise you that are not biologically related to you or were not biologically related to you. You can also consider those individuals ancestors as well. Um, so why is it important to set up an ancestral altar or why is it important to um pay homage to your ancestors well first let's get into um a little bit of um spiritualism and, and african spiritualism now let's remember that religion and spirituality are not one in the same. They are two different things. Religion is man-made or man-created uh, or human-created, to put in short. Whereas spiritualism or African spiritualism, which I am dealing with right now, what I'm talking about now, is based upon what you were born with, what you actually came into this world with. You came into the world as a spiritual being or as a spiritual person. But throughout your time upon the earth, it's a possibility that you may have been um, indoctrinated, if you will, into religious beliefs or a religious belief system versus a spiritual system, which you're born with. or Because you come to this earth in a physical form. But remember, we are all spirits having a human experience. So, now I know you're wondering, okay, why am I on the floor? <laughs> there is a perfectly good reason why I am kneeling on the floor and I'm doing this. It's because I have the ancestral altar right here and it's set up. I'm going to tell you um, a little bit about that in just a second. So, remember, why? Let's get back to this. Why is it important that we have an ancestral altar? Why is it important that we talk to our ancestors or that we honor our ancestors? Well, those of us that have studied, read, and researched on our African culture and our African history, right now I'm just specifically dealing with African culture. Uh, although other cultures have adopted and implemented within their culture the same as ancestral worship and you know, talking to the ancestors for leadership and guidance, so on and so forth. But right now, specifically, I'm just dealing with the ancient African aspect of it or the African spiritualism of it. Um, 
It's important to have an ancestral altar or to communicate with your ancestors because, and I'm uh, just like in Christianity, um, they have what they call or what they consider angels. Well, in African spirituality, we deal with and we communicate with what we consider and what we call our ancestors because our ancestors, we know for a fact, were human at one point in time. They actually were here on the same earth that we walk on and they have transcended to the spirit realm and to the spirit world. And and, to, and for me, it's like it's a thin line between the physical existence and the spiritual realm. So we always call on our ancestors. Remember, when we need certain things to happen in our lives and certain things that we need to get done. And, and I guess in order for you to really believe that and to understand that and understand that is you have to read and research, like I said before, read for yourself, research for yourself about this topic and about this subject and just see if it resonates with you. If it doesn't resonate with you, cool, don't worry about it, don't do it. But if you come across this video and it does resonate with you, Great, wonderful, continue to research. But as I was saying before, we communicate with our ancestors when, for example, if we want just an extra boost of confidence. Let's use that as an example. Let's say that you're not that confident and you're not that much of a confident person and we're not saying that you want to be cocky or anything like that, but you want confidence. So you go to that ancestor that you know that was confident while they were here on earth and you communicate with them and you ask them for the guidance to be more confident. Um, that is if you're needing confidence. Now, if you are the type of individual where you don't know any of your ancestors, um, if you are in a situation where you don't know which ancestor you should talk to or you should communicate with, that's fine. Because you're in a position where you're still learning. And we're all still learning, even myself. I don't come on here saying that I know everything or I know it all because I don't. Because I still, you know, watch other videos, still listen, learn, and read for myself because that's important. And I think that when you do that, you get a clearer understanding of where it is and what it is that you want to learn for yourself. Instead of always relying or depending I'm going to stand up because, you know, I'm getting older now. And I, oh, my knees are hurting. And so you want to um, be able to better understand and learn how to communicate with the ancestors. So if you're, ha if you're having a certain situation where you need money or you're looking for a new job, you can always call on your ancestors for help. Now remember, all of our ancestors and all of your ancestors weren't good. So you want to call on for specific purposes and for specific reasons, you want to call on certain ancestors. You may not know their names specifically, but here's an example of what you can say. You can say, uh, to those of my ancestors who are pure and, genu and genuine, um, if you could please help me with X, Y, Z, or if you could please blah, 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 and try that, be sincere about it and, and see if that doesn't work for you. Um, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, you know, you maybe want to try a different approach or, you know, this just may not be for you at this time. And that's cool too. So offerings. So we have some ancestors, like you can, um, give offerings, you know, for your thanks and for your gratitude for them helping you. Uh, you can give them wine, water, juice, tea, coffee, whatever that specific or that particular ancestor that you're communicating with likes or liked uh, when they were once in the physical. You can offer up uh, uh, 
those uh, items as 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 an offering to your ancestors. Like for example, I'll go with, uh, let's see. Okay, one of my ancestors um, liked cornbread. So um, I got the urge one day to just to make a cornbread the way she used to make it. And so I offered that up to her as an offering. And um, I know a lot of you <laughs> may think or may sound like we may think that sounds crazy, but when you haven't read or researched this stuff, yeah, it's going to sound crazy to you. But for those of you who understand where I'm coming from, thank you. Um, so <laughs> in doing so, when you're offering up to the ancestors uh, these things that they like, then in a way and in a system, then it's like more they're more apt to. Um, you know, being there for you and, and getting things done and helping you to get things done. But you must remember that you have to um, put forth the work and put forth the effort because you just can't just say, okay, I'm going to offer up you libation. I'm going to offer you this. I'm going to offer you that and just sit back and relax. But you know, you have to do uh, your part as well. And, and offering libation, that's a part of it and offering offerings so I'm gonna show you now and remember this is just an example you don't have to set up your altar like this in any way form or fashion um, this is just an example and um, I'm gonna show you some things okay first and I'm gonna explain each uh, item so that you can see and I know this is not a fancy altar because I don't have fancy money. So, <laughs> therefore, I think that it's important to work with what you have and use what you have. Okay? Now, piece by piece. All right, first off, let's start off with this elephant ceramic piece. Now, I know what you're thinking. Elephant, why do you have an elephant on here? Well, number one, what, I guess you're saying, well, what does the elephant represent? Well, for me, I just like elephants. So, and I thought it was a cool piece, a uh, cool ceramic piece, and this is basically an incense holder. So, what am I using this for? I have in my hand, as you can see, I have quarry shells. One, one, two, three, four, and five. I have five quarry shells, and these quarry shells represent the goddess Oshun. If you don't know who the goddess Oshun is, uh, I encourage you to Google it. Google who the goddess Oshun is. And I have with me five nickels because five is the number that represents Oshun and the nickels also, I read somewhere that they also represent Oshun. So also Google that as well. All right. And this I have with me also that's a part of my ancestral altar is another incense holder. This is the incense holder that I use um, to burn incense and what this is this is just what I place the incense holder on so this is the cauldron it's empty right now and normally with this I pour libation in here which is water so I use water 
for this. And this is also on my ancestral altar. And you may have seen these charcoal, but that's just placed there. You don't have to have this on here. That's just to light um, uh, specific incense or whatever. So that's also there. This, so you can kind of say that this altar is dedicated to Oshun in a way. Um, and what this glass holds is cinnamon for Oshun, because uh, Oshun likes cinnamon. And this is honey. And as you can tell by this, I really need to uh, clean off my ancestral altar. Also remember, that's very important. Cleanliness is also important. You want to keep it clean. And this, one of my favorite pieces, this is a mother doll. I call it the mother doll, African mother doll. And this is the baby on the back. So I just keep this on there because... I needed a place to house her and this is her home so she represents the mother aspect mother and child aspect um i don't have a male doll to represent the father aspect sorry dudes but you know how that goes um no disrespect because i know that man woman child creates the holy trinity but yeah but and still and i also use this as well to pour libation in so that's my ancestral altar and also on your ancestral altar you can place a photo or photos of your ancestors or a specific ancestor that you want to communicate with you can also place that on your altar but for me this altar is um it's kind of like uh oshun dedicated but at the same time, I still communicate with my ancestors uh, through this altar. So, I hope that was somewhat helpful. Um, if not, uh, please read, research for yourself, and maybe find other videos here on YouTube that are related to this subject and to this topic. So, um, I was, I'm hoping I was able to help you out. Um, so until next time, peace, love, and transcendence, and thank you so much for tuning in.